Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we're going to talk about JavaScript arrays. We've already seen an array in the previous lesson, and I kind of glossed over it and said, ah, pay no attention to that for right now. Well, I think it's a good time to talk about it. Uh, if you recall this line of code where we wrote uh, against the arguments object, and we said we can access each item in the array of arguments that are passed in. So we passed in one, two, three, four, and five. We used a loop statement, which is still coming soon. Hold on, we'll get there. Uh, to access each element of the arguments array or the arguments object. Uh, so the arguments uh, array, or actually it's an implemented as an object, but it works the same basic way. It's basically a variable that has compartments that holds other variables. So it's a bucket that contains other buckets that contain values inside of them, okay? And it's a convenient way of storing multiple related values together in one place. So let's start over and create some simple examples of arrays and you can see how they work and then hopefully that example will make a little bit more sense. So let's start off the way that we always do, creating from our template a new web page this time. We're going to call this c9js underscore 08 dot html. Click save. And here we want to go uh, 8 JavaScript arrays. Get this set up so we remember the work that we've done. And we want to set up our script tag like always. So let's start off with defining a array. We're going to call this candidates equals open and close square braces and then a semicolon. So now we're, we've created a new variable of type array and it's empty at this point so we need to initialize it with some values. And the way that we do that is to use an index to access or to create an element inside of the array. They're zero based, so we start with the number zero. And then we can access each element of the array, each bucket in the array using its index, zero, one, and so on. Furthermore, if we want to read a value out of the array, we access it the same way by using the name of the array and then using one of the uh, indexes to grab an element of that array. So we want to get to the second element of the array with index 1. Let's see what we get. Let's take a look at our code here. And it should be candidates, not candidate. And let's try it again. There we go. All right, so that's how we define an array. That's how we access each element of the array through its indexes using square brackets all the way. All right, so let's comment out all of this because there's an easier way to at least initialize, to declare and initialize all in one step. So let's do this. Looks the same so far, right? We'll use an open square bracket and now we can simply, in the case of a uh, str uh, an array of strings, we can just start typing in some strings. And I could create as many as I want to here, but I'm just going to stop at three. And so the same thing still applies if I were to use 
that same syntax. This time it chooses a different item in my array because I've defined them and it keeps them in order. So this would be element zero, element one, element two, and so on. Okay. All right, so now I've shown you two arrays. Each of them are using just strings, but you can use any data type. In fact, you can even mix data types. So let's do this. I'm gonna use that date object again. We're gonna pass in a real date, let it parse it. So we're passing it in as a string. So here we're going to create our array. And I'm using three different data types. I'm using a string, a number, and then an object. It just happens to be an object of type date. We haven't talked about looping, but I think in this case, again, I just want to loop through each item easily inside of my array. And so here I'm going to spit out some HTML just using the line break. And I'll be able to easily get to each item in my array as I loop through each item in my value. We'll talk about the loop again, the for loop a little bit later. And I left off the S again, so let's fix that and try it again. There we go. And we're able to loop through and print out the value of each item, the string value, the numeric value, and the date value using the uh, document.write function. Okay. Now there's a different type of an array that we can use as well, and they're called associative arrays. Let me type that out. And it allows us to do something like this. Whoops. And then instead of using a numeric index, we can just use a string index or a string to, uh, to index into that particular item in our array. And it's associative. Because now we can just associate the list with an easy to access string, like so. There we go, Sawyer's number is 15, great. All right, so that just about does it. That's about all you need to know really about arrays in JavaScript. From simple arrays, just declaring them using indexes to access individual elements of the array. Same here. In this example where we're retrieving the value instead of setting the value. Here we are in, uh, initializing and declaring all in one line of code using different data types in a single array and creating associative arrays where we can use a lookup value, a string, in order to get at a given element of the array. All right, very good. All right, so we're gonna continue pushing forward. Our knowledge is growing little by little, but we're doing awesome. See you in the next video, thank you.
Mm-hmm.